Welcome to the SEO.co Search Engine Optimization Podcast. Digital marketing essentials and next level tactics. From off-site and on-site optimization to persuasive selling and everything in between. You'll learn actionable tips on what it takes to outright and outrank your competition. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be talking about building links manually. In past episodes, we've talked a lot about how we can attract inbound links naturally. And building links manually is a little trickier since it demands more precision control and more variables. But with each link that you build, you'll develop a new piece of high quality content tailor made for the audience of a specific publisher. And you'll guest post that content on their site. The content will contain one or more links pointing back to your domain, and over time you'll target a wider diversity of different publishers, eventually inching your way up to bigger, more reputable sources. So there are a lot of excellent advantages to manual link building versus bringing things in naturally. First of all, being able to refine the direction and having control over it is the main advantage. You'll have a lot more precision and control with manual link building. Rather than publishing a piece and hoping for the best, you can target publishers you know will link back to you, and you can seek sources closely in tune with your target audience. Another benefit of manual link building is that link attraction is nice, but it's almost impossible to scale, and most of the sources from which you'll acquire links using the link earning method are low to medium authorities. And one link from a high authority website is worth dozens from lower authorities. So the long-term play is important here. And then of course, um, there are a number of secondary benefits to manual link building. Some of these are like personal branding, visibility, reputation, and relationship building. There are also disadvantages to manual link building. First of all, you increase your risk of penalty. If you aren't careful, you could wind up building links on bad sources or in bad ways that end up getting you penalized. Um, But I will mention that if you do follow best practices, this really shouldn't be an issue. And we've talked about um, best practices in other episodes. Um, Another you know, potential disadvantage to manual link building is that manual link building demands a heavy investment of time and on an ongoing basis to build and manage all of your publisher relationships. It's really going to take a lot of persistence and relationship building. So I wanted to spend some time also talking about how to create that perfect backlink. Um, You understand a little bit about manual uh, link building and that you've got to write this guest post. So your guest post is going to serve as a kind of housing for your inbound link. But don't let that description fool you. Your content still needs to be top notch. So let's talk about some of the factors that will make a perfect link, one that most publishers will accept and also one that Google won't penalize and one that will earn you the highest amount of authority and referral traffic. So. The first thing, high authority sources. If you're looking for a direct measure here, you can shoot for domain authority. The higher the domain authority of your link source, the more authoritative value your link will pass. The problem is that you can't post links on any high authority site that easily. If you could, they'd lose their authority. Instead, you need to work on some lower authority sources first, gradually working your way up. Um, You also need to make sure that your um, backlink has a really natural placement. You don't want it to stick out like a sore thumb. It needs to be placed naturally in the body of your content. There's no need to be sneaky here, but it shouldn't appear out of place. For example, if you're writing a longer piece, which is, I'd say, about a thousand words or more, you'll want to include at least several links to outside sources, only one of which is to your domain. These should be spread throughout the piece rather than lumped together, and they should appear naturally in your work while adding value. That means it should support a fact or claim made within your content or provide an example that illustrates a point. If a publisher suspects you of trying to sneak your own link into the body content or if it doesn't add value for readers, they're either going to reject your submission or they're going to remove the link. 
You also need to make sure that your content is really high quality. And it needs to be high quality in two different ways. The first of these is the conventional intuitive way. Your content should be well-researched, logically organized, with some compelling points, multimedia integrations, and of course, eloquent writing that's accessible enough for almost anyone to enjoy. The second requirement of high quality is a bit more subtle and variable. Your content has to be valuable specifically for the readers of your chosen publisher. Though it may be tempting to try and write what you know or what your main audience might want, you'll need to compromise and keep your publisher's audience in mind as the priority. Context is everything when considering the value of a link and context can apply to a few different things. First, your article has to be contextually relevant to the site it's published on. Fortunately, you'll have a bit of help here. If your article isn't contextually relevant to a publisher's audience, the publisher will flat out reject it, saving you the trouble. Second, your link has to add some kind of value, value to your piece. You can't just shoehorn it into an unrelated or out of place section, and you can't just call out your brand name at the end. Instead, you need to find a natural value adding way to get your link in the body of the content. For example, you could cite a statistic or quote in your on-site work that validates the main point of your article. Earlier, I explained that one of the old school black hat practices of over-optimizing the anchor text of your links. In the old days, optimized anchor text referred to text that contained one or more target keyword phrases. In order to increase the relevance of the target page to those phrases, these days, optimized anchor text is more about explaining or justifying your use of the link. You'll need some contextual clues here too, and you might even call them keywords, but be sure your anchor text fits naturally into your writing. For example, you might call to the link in question with something like, according to our recently published data on blank, X percent of marketers take this action, or for more information, check out my post on blank. Your link should also fit neatly into the broader context of your campaign. For example, a link and a guest post may fit all the requirements I listed above, but if you're posting to the same site for the 100th time and you don't acquire links from anywhere else, you're going to see greatly diminished returns from every new link posted there. Remember, one of your key principles for success is diversification. So in addition to everything that I've previously mentioned, your link should be distinct from one another in both form and source. You're also going to want to make sure that your website is very professional looking and you're going to want to take care of all of your on-site optimization. This is going to serve as many publishers first impression of your brand. And then after that, create a blog and fill it with as many high quality posts as you can. Backdate your post so it looks like you've been at this for a long time and do shoot for an impressive volume, at least 30 posts, but never sacrifice quality for quantity here. Your first round of publishers will have nothing to go on except these posts to determine your level of expertise, so get ready to impress them. Once your blog is established, start syndicating your posts on social media and build your audience. There are a number of ways to do this and the topic itself warrants a whole you know, episode on its own, but here are a few of the basics. First, post content regularly, respond to your followers, engage new followers in conversation, participate in community discussions, reach out to influencers and engage with them. Your goal here should be to develop an impressive blog with a decent recurring readership and an active social media campaign to match. And once that's established, you can start stopping around for publishers. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for joining us on the SEO.co podcast. We appreciate your time. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show and visit SEO.co for more resources based on today's topic, as well as access to more podcast episodes to help you improve your site's long-term SEO success.